Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is a special edition of the AFC Championship game on EA Sports. Up next, we've got a good one on tap between the visiting Houston Texans and the Chicago Cougars. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Straight ahead, it's a clash to decide the AFC's representative in the Super Bowl. And it'll be a great one between the Houston Texans and the Chicago Cougars. Hello, everyone. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The postseason continuing here on EA Sports. And, man, it is electric in here, and it should be conference championship time. I don't know about you, but my butterflies in my stomach, they have iron wings in this one. <laughs> and every guy I've ever talked to has all said the same thing. This game, the conference championship game, may have more intensity than even the Super Bowl because you know what the stakes are. You're trying so hard to get to the big game that this is the, this is the one that's the real challenge. Super Bowl and we'll know soon enough which team that'll be as we are underway in the AFC title game. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. As we get a peek at the former Red Raider and 10th pick in the 2017 draft Patrick Mahomes. Freeman. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. And let's look here at the Houston offense. And what a tough environment to roll into. On the road, playing one of the better teams in the league, obviously, because this is the playoffs. So what do teams talk about? Bringing their own momentum, bringing their own energy on the road, because you know you won't get any from the home crowd. On second down, Freeman. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Shotgun snap to Mahomes. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. So on fourth down, here's Ryan Quigley now to kick this one away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Fielded at about the 28. 12 yards on the return that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they will be led out by their 6-4 quarterback. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering snacks. I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. Here 
The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Hey, exit. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And he whips that one incomplete there. Kareem Hunt is running back, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up third down. And a look now at the defense for Houston. Trent Murphy's number one attribute is playing against the run, but he continues to work hard on his pass rush skills. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Back to throw here. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively, brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. The first carry now. This is Johnson. That one's good for 35 yards on the ground and a first down. Thought they were going to have him down a lot earlier, but he was able to shed that tackle. Shows the value of the weight room, doesn't it? Shows the value of the attitude when you run the football. Don't go down easily. Break a rush coming, and he's taken down. Leonard Williams able to collapse the pocket, get to him, and drop him for a loss of a yard. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. After the sack here, second and 11. On the counter, Devontae Freeman. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. And here are the Chicago defensive starters. Devin McCourty is one half of twins that can cover just about anyone in the league. A top-notch player who can play corner or safety. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Working from the gun, Mahomes. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. Touchdown, Houston. DeAndre Hopkins, 43 yards. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. And on a stage of this magnitude, the conference championship, so many early game jitters can happen. So that scores a big relief to a coach. Yeah, no one wants to mention that in the locker room before the game. No one says, hey, listen, don't fumble or don't do this because you don't want negative thoughts. That's why getting off to a good start is so huge for everyone. The first score in the conference title game, massive. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Second and four. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football. Led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's Zach Pascal. And he takes us up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 15 yards through the air and a first down. And they'll try the jet sweep here. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field of the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling, usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, 
You can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 49-yard line. They'll look to throw. And he fires one incomplete. Well, he kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the throwing football. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now if you're the defense, what are you going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Absolutely love the flexibility of these punters. Their leg drive, able to get it way up in the air. And that allows their punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time. And now out comes Houston. And they will start this drive with just terrible field position backed up inside their own five. But we have seen teams be bold here and take shots, right? Sometimes you go max protection, make it a one receiver route, and take your shot downfield and see what happens. And occasionally, we've seen success occur. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there. And Mahomes is going to go down in the end zone, and that is going to be a safety. And you know, the man who sat in my chair the last few years, he has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Ooh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. Now the free kick comes after the safety from the 20 as they bring the punter on to try and get some hang time here. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Ready, ready. Good starting field ready, position ready. for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They'll drop the throw. He's going to sling this deep downfield. This is caught inside the 15. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. A big play there. 64 yards. And his guys have taken the lead. I'll let you do the analysis, partner, but with every touchdown pass this young quarterback throws and with the success that his team has had, I just continue to be more and more impressed. Let's both do the analysis. Impressed, aren't we both? Yeah. I mean, and why shouldn't we be? We've seen him improve throughout the year. We've seen him settle in now, and you can see the confidence of the team has grown. His confidence has grown.
own. I think that everyone around this guy feels good about what they've seen. And it's also safe for him when he's driving home to turn on Sports Talk Radio. He's okay. Extra point try, good by Gano. And the lead is now two. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. They'll run with Freeman here to begin the drive. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They'll break the huddle. Come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. From the gun, it's Mahomes. Oh, this is intercepted, intended for Hill. Picked by Kendall Fuller. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up. Whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drive is exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was fairly easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. Yeah, we'll see if it's that easy here. Going right side here, and that's complete. Second catch of this AFC title game but he's got a first down now that was pretty they executed that curl route versus zone coverage and that changes things a little bit because against man it's often a tight curl tight sharply run route against zone you're just looking for that open spot that dead area so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place and usually a tight window he fired a bullet in there for the completion they'll try and run for it on first and goal and that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four yard line if you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take on extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. Looking to throw. Buying time to his left. And he will score! Touchdown, Chicago! It's their quarterback with his second touchdown of this opening quarter. And his guys find a way to stretch that lead. The defensively didn't seem like anybody had eyes on the quarterback, and he took advantage. So you think that maybe we're seeing some pretty good instincts for a young guy? Because that's the thing you worry about coming out of college. You're used to getting away with just about anything you want to do. You're just superior. Here, he has to read it, figure it out, and know when it's time to go. Gano now to add the extra point. And that makes it a nine-point game. Just a four-play drive that time. And it results in a four-yard touchdown run. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Texans' offense ready to go here for their next drive. They trail early on in this Super Bowl as they come up first and ten. Here's a run on first down that doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, he's going to be tackled behind the line for a loss of one. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Back to the ground, this time with Freeman. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. 
Looking to throw is Mahomes. Underneath for Johnson. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he's on to punt for Houston. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. He's thrown for a touchdown pass, and he's run for one so far. When you're able to watch a guy perform at a high level and do it in multiple ways, yeah, arm, legs, he really helps his team in a big way. You've got to think that they feel great about where they are in this ball game. They feel even better about him leading their team. Yeah, he's hoping to put them into a better spot after this drive. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. Bravo! I'm going back to you. Hey, 4 one Mike. 4 one Mike. <laughs> They'll look to throw now on first down. Throw left side complete. That's Lamb. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Here we go on second and 12. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. 23 yards to pick up there. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory. Down at the 33. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly Special looked like foul. it indeed. Here come face the flags. Mask. Defense. So that flag. cost him 15 Here we go. Here and it we doesn't go. matter anymore oh, how you get the face mask any part of it that's going to be 15 yards the penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and 10 yeah motion 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 Mike, 55. now back to throw and that's going to be incomplete too tough to hold on to that one it's second down an incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll run with Hunt on second down. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. J.J. Watt makes another tackle there, and, and it's for a minimal gain. And let's face it, if that's all you're going to get running the ball, you've not got much success against him and his team. Or Yeah, you better find a way to go around J.J. Watt, which isn't easy to do. It's really not, because you got to try everything. Can you go around him? Can you go by him? Can you influence him to get him out of position so maybe you can wall him off? He's a really sharp, intelligent player, as well as a physical specimen. Meanwhile, on third down, they... Take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. They'll try the field goal now with Graham Gano. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and that will extend their lead even further. 
So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all, to me, that's a good drive. Throwing on first down is Mahomes. And this is caught. It's Greg Olson. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Running from the gun, Johnson. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. Touchdown, Houston. Duke Johnson, 67 yards as his guys are back within a single score. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Second and nine now. The completion good. This is Eric Ebron. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Well, they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Only a yard there on the keeper, but that's all he needed. First down. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half, to about the 39. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now this time he'll look to throw. Ebron with it over the middle. And getting this just shy of midfield. They'll spot it at the 49. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Looking deep for Hilton. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Here's Hunt. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. And this offense on third down today, two for five to this point. Here it's third and three. They'll look to throw here. And incomplete. Almost intercepted. The D lineman almost had it. Couldn't hang on. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> He's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there. Checking up nicely. Good English on that punt. This is Freeman on first and ten. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Going to run the sweep here. This is Hopkins. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. 
The Texans on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and five. Mahomes going to throw. He is going to find Hill here. Tally, that is catch number one for him in this AFC Championship. It's a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. 16 yards on that one, and also a Texan first down. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. They'll run on first down. Freeman, and they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. AFC title game, second quarter action, two minutes to play. A reminder, as we've done all year, we'll send you to Orlando for our EA Sports halftime report in a bit. The coach is with us per usual. As we start to look ahead, Charles, to our potential matchups in this year's Super Bowl. Break it down, coach. Break it down. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. DeAndre Hopkins once again the intended target, but now it'll be third down. Throwing his Mahomes on third. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game. So you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. So possession goes over here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and ten. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Justin Reed. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And looking at this situation, Charles, you got more than a minute. You've got all three timeouts. Probably no need to play this safe. So what you're saying is that we're doing a little bit of a mind meld here, aren't we? Because I'm thinking along the same lines as you. This amount of time, don't be compelled to play it too safe. This is a chance to get points on the board. Press it a little bit. And especially since a touchdown here gets you the lead. Throwing again on second down. Mahomes. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Mahomes now to throw. And he finds a man. It's Olsen. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. He's got it at the 15. Touchdown, Houston. Tyreek Hill. Texans have retaken the lead. The extra point splits the uprights, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. 
Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, well, the conclusion we draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. Looking deep for Hilton. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. This secondary has been roasted in this first half, but they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back, but that's one step in the proper direction. And they will get to him behind the line, but the clock continues to tick down. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. Watch out for Hill on the return. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Patrick Mahomes on his way out for their next drive. And he's looked pretty good. Does have the one interception, but two touchdown passes so far. Your analysis. They'll take the offset. When you're talking about throwing two touchdown passes, no one wants to see an interception thrown. But those things happen in the course of a ball game and over the course of a season. But throwing two touchdown passes, that's why the team has an advantage. That's what they're looking for more of. They'll be hoping to make it a 3-1 to one ratio here in the second quarter. So we come upon halftime in the AFC title game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks as always. One half remains in the battle to see who will take home that Lamar Hunt trophy and represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. We'll get back to you guys in just a moment. But first, time to look ahead to the NFC Championship coming up later today. And it should be a great one as well, as it'll be the Arizona Cardinals doing battle with the Seattle Seahawks. So with that, let's get you right back out for the second half and the right to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl.